What is the most outrageous stupid thing you have done in hopes of having sex? I got invited over for a booty call from a woman I met outside a store. We never even went on a date, and before we got busy I had to watch the last 20 minutes of Toy Story 3, in bed with her and her 6 year old son. I was desperate and she was a yoga teacher. It was worth it. Hey kid, I'm not your new dad. I'm just here to frick your mom. Drove 2.5 hours, each way, to an airport where a girl had 45 minutes between connecting flights. Worked though, did it in the airport parking garage, no regrets. I was 18, my gf at the time, now wife, lived in another city about 90 kilometers away, just under 60 miles for you American folk. During one of the heaviest rainstorms known to mankind, I got on my 1996 Yamaha FZR 600 motorcycle with nearly bad tires and drove over. I was wet, she was wet, no one got laid cause I got sick. I was wet, nice, she was wet, nice, no one got laid cause I got sick, nice. Drove 35 miles at 1am, in my clapped out 63 Impala while on leave. Arrived to find that the swingers I intended to meet were not in their 30s as I mistakenly assumed, but in their 60s. Still banged, had a great time, was 21. Sounds like a one of a kind experience. So in shower, we hadn't even gone to third base, and I laid on the floor by the door hoping that she would take the hint and take it upon herself to climb on top of me and make that our special moment. I ended up just sadly laying on the floor. That is the mating ritual of a snail. You are human being. I was dating a girl very briefly when she had to go to Saint Louis for work for several months. Since we'd only been dating a month we decided to just do out things that summer and maybe reconnect when she got back to Chicago. Well about month in she asks if I'd like to come visit and spend the weekend. I wanted guaranteed sex. So I said yes. Three days before I'm set to go down there, she calls and says that she has to come to Chicago for a job interview during the time I'm supposed to be there. Since I was living at my mom's place, this was right out of college, we wouldn't have anywhere to go in the city and very little time to do anything. So, I took an 8 hour bus ride to St. Louis, got into town at 6pm, we banged once and went to bed, woke up at 6am, drove 7 hours to Chicago, she did her interview. We drove 7 hours back to St. Louis. She woke up and went to work and I took a 9 hour bus ride back to Chicago. Then she sent me a Facebook message saying we shouldn't see one another anymore. I'm pretty sure everything I've done was in some way related to hopes of sex. Learn to play the ukulele. Sex. Go to work early. Sex. Do the dishes. Sex. Have sex. Sex. Learn to play the ukulele. This guy freaks took my shirt off on a street corner in the crappy part of town. I'm a girl, it would have worked, but the person was so awkward I couldn't tell they were trying to bang too. They might have thought you're crazy since you just took your shirt off in a bad part of town. Went with a hippie to a second location. Didn't work and wouldn't have been worth it if it did. I was 17, he was 26 and in a band. Never go with a hippie to a second location. She lived in another city. We'd usually commute back and forth to have sex. Well, one day she informs me that her parents were out. Being the frisky 16 year old I was, I hop in my 89 Ford Escort and haul butt to her place. I was warned by my dad not to drive it anywhere. About 5 minutes into the trip, I hear ticking. Ticking turned to tapping. Tapping turned to knocking. Knocking turned to a connecting rod being slung through the block. I was about halfway there at this point. I give her a call to explain the problem and ask to pick me up. Nope. Her sister is using her car. Next I had to make the call to my dad. Not a fun night. You have ruined my favorite car in the aid of Frick. I forgive you. Drove 2 hours. Took almost 3 because of traffic. To Manhattan from Philly suburbs in hopes of maybe banging my super hot ex-girlfriend who insisted there was no way we were going to have sex. We did. My man. I've mentioned this before, but I once traded a blowjob for chocolate. I desperately wanted to gorge on some chocolate but could not for the life of me. Be bothered to walk the 300 meters that separated our flat from the shop down the road. I traded a blowjob for my boyfriend if he would get me some. While he was out, 
I put a white sheet on the dining table, and laid there naked, looking all sacrificial. It was a good day. I made a bet with my husband that if he doubled his money at the casino that I would let him have anal sex with me. He more than doubled his money, never making a bet like that ever again. Well, I was in the seminary for a year and dropped out cause I wanted to have sex with this girl, Kathy. Followed her to Scranton. Took the first job I could find in HR. Later she divorced me. So no, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Spend 400 pounds on airplane tickets to meet a girl I had been texting for 3 months in a country neither of us lived in. She was a no show. You were texting a fat guy in Wisconsin. I was in high school and just lost my virginity to this girl. My parents didn't want to drive me anywhere and she lived in the next town over. So the next day I walked there, which took me about 7 hours. In high school, circa 1999. Started hanging out occasionally with several girls through a mutual friend. Mutual friend and myself played magic and wanted to teach them one time. So I made up decks for three of them to play with. When they went to give them back after, I said no, those are for you to keep. My thinking was we'd hang out more, play more, and they'd appreciate the generous gesture. But never happened again. Threw away a lot of my best cards. Dragons, angels, griffins, artifacts. For a futile effort. Pretty much stopped playing after that. What's worse is you know they probably threw those cards away shortly after. Used to have a thing with this girl but she was only living in my town working and she was let go and moved hours away. We were friends on Facebook but I stopped talking as she was out of sight out of mind of sorts. Anyway out drinking with my friends and was going hard as was after watching Man UTD play at 1 that day and we all support them so we were going hard. Around 9pm we heard that a pub down the road was having a party and all of us super drunk go and I thought I saw her but I couldn't be sure so I said I was seeing things until phone beeped and message on Facebook from her are you in pub? Ended up going over and necking on all was well. She was staying in her friends for the night and wanted me to come but I was super drunk and tired as was drinking for about 14 hours at this stage. I said no said goodbye and went home. Woke at 4am and was still drunk saw so she drunk messaged me also was clear if I went I was guaranteed sex. Problem was she was staying in a friend's house on a private estate about 8 miles out of town and I was far too drunk to drive and where I'm from a small town a taxi at 4 is impossible. I decided to walk. The whole road up is pitch black and the only reason I didn't get lost was because my mate lived on the road and had walked it many times drunk but never alone and it was so eerie. I reached the estate and, somehow, managed to scale a 10 foot wall I land down and, crap, the whole lane of the estate is pitch black and no lights and I turn on my phone's flash and I had 8% battery. Now I've been in the estate before but did not know it and had no clue where the house was but no 8% wasn't enough to get there. Every bone in my body was telling me this was a terrible idea and to go back but the chance of sex was there so I went halfway to the house. Phone died. After 2 hours in the dark finally found the house got there and boom. Forgot a condom. SMH. My heart broke. Took guitar lessons for 8 years and joined a high school jazz band. Learned all the Led Zeppelin songs I could. Took way too long to realize high school girls don't like classic rock or jazz band that much. Anyways, here's Wonderwall. Drove drunk and on painkillers to a 7-Eleven like 2 miles away on St. Paddy's Day, 2012. To grab a box of condoms. So I could rush back. Frick a girl I met that night and would never see again. And also not be able to nut in the process thanks to the drug and alcohol combo. Essentially making the whole process worthless in the end. I would never consider doing that again. Just because of the intoxicated while driving part. I could have killed myself. Or more importantly others. Looking back it horrifies me. Haven't touched an opiate since the 5th of December 2014. Although I still drink occasionally. But never drive when I do. Freaking stupid as anything someone could ever do. Frick the down voters. You can't change the past and you're doing better now so why punish you for something that can't be changed? Gay hookup app. Grinder. I'm bisexual but quite frankly is easier to find easy and fast sex with a man rather than a woman. So I take that path. Talk to a couple of guys. 
A lot of dead ends but I finally get to know someone who was as desperate as me. We almost did it but when we reached the hotel the manager didn't let me in because I forgot my ID and couldn't prove I was an adult. After that I just gave up and didn't try again. Went on a date. This very gorgeous woman told me halfway through dinner that she was Jewish so I excused myself, went to the bathroom and circumcised myself with my car keys. I like pretending everything is true on a credit, because this made me laugh so hard imagining this. Sorry, this is long. A female teacher and I started at our first year teaching the same year. She was married and ended up separating and moving across the country at the end of the year. Didn't know her that well so a year goes by without seeing or talking to her. I end up seeing her at the store when she was visiting her friends and family. We talk and she tells me where she moved and that she liked it and in the process of getting a divorce. How you doing? We begin to email and talk on the phone fairly regularly. And it seems we both enjoy talking to each other. Six months later it's Christmas and she is back in town and we have dinner and a movie. Get a little handsy. We continue to talk on the phone and since I wasn't tied down, I was looking to move somewhere. I made the most sense to check out where she moved, so I did. Liked it. I liked her so. I liked it. And I got a job at a school, bought a condo, and moved across the country. I told myself and others it was just a change of venue and this was a good place. But let's face it, I moved for her, not for sex so much as a relationship. We continued to talk every day until the move and I visited twice more that school year. My friends and I drove across the country and start getting my place set up. They didn't really know her so we make plans to hang out that night. We go out to some bars and I notice she is acting kind of weird. After an hour or so, she introduces me to a guy she knows. See where this is going. Turns out the guy isn't just a guy she knows but the guy she is seeing. The school I was employed at sucked. It was an at-risk school, but the principal failed to tell me that even after I inquired many times. The housing market also dropped so the condo wasn't worth very much. I ended up staying the year then moving back to my first school. There's more but that's most of it. TLDR. Moved across the country for a girl. She starts dating someone else. In a town two hours away from my college for a rugby tournament over some random weekend. Get pretty drunk that Saturday night and I get a text from a girl I am not particularly interested in back in my college town. She wants me to come over. And now blackout frisky me calls for taxi. I pass out in the cab and he drives me the two hours to her dorm. Cost me almost $300. I get to her room and we make it. Finger bang her since her roommates are there. And go to bed. Next day. Ask a buddy to come pick me up. Terrible. Rugby tournaments always end with some disappointing or weird crap happening. Was so frisky. Hooked up with the first guy that messaged me on Grinder. Not outrageous but stupid in that we were both too frisky to care about if the other had an STD and was lying about it. All he needed was you. Not too outrageous but pretty tragic. I booked a premiere in double room because I thought I had a pretty good chance with a girl who was going on a night out with me and my mates. I wasn't willing to take her back to my single bed at my parents house. It definitely could have happened but at that point in my life I was too shy to actually make the move at the club. I ended up sharing that room with my buddy so he didn't have to walk home. I told all my friends I had booked the room because my bedroom was being painted. The shame. When I was 17 I used to climb my girlfriend's balcony every night after I would leave because of her curfew at 7pm. We'd then hang out in her room with loud tunes of death metal, trip hop, or indie acoustic and usually would freak. Once her mom walked in and I rolled off the bed so fast I was pretty sure I traveled back in time. Oh, and we're still dating 8 years later. Crashed a funeral at a church by myself for someone I didn't know. Signed the guest book. Paid respects, etc. Fortunately no one asked me any questions. The girl I was trying to hook up with was hired to sing at the funeral. She thought it was hilarious that I showed up. During the ceremony I texted her a comment about how easy it would be to clean B from the cathedral floor. It was entertaining watching her try to fight back laughter while sitting behind the priest conducting the funeral. The hookup attempt was successful. You're disgusting heathen. And I love your forehead you beautiful bastard. In high school, a girl I was into was auditioning for a character that was part of a couple in a play. Me. 
having no acting experience whatsoever, decided that I should audition for the other character and hoped that, in the off chance that I actually did get the part, some chemistry would spark from there which would eventually lead to sexy times. It worked. Rode 20 kms on my bike in the middle of the night to see my 16 year old girlfriend. I was the same age. Had to sneak in through the bedroom window while her very crazy and suspicious dad patrolled the backyard Metal Gear Solid style with the new 44 he bought. Due to the fact that he thought there were prowlers in the neighborhood. Drove 12 hours, each way, after meeting a girl. She told me to swing by her place next time I was in town. I said oh. I'll be here next weekend too with no prior plans of ever returning to that crap hole. Drove 24 total hours for 3 minutes of glory. I was in Kuta, Bali looking for love, like sailors do. Indonesia, being the largest Muslim nation in the world, frowned upon prostitution. So it wasn't like the Pai, Thailand or S. Korea. There were simply no prostitutes. They always say ask the cab drivers. They always know where to find the goods. Six drunken sailors, two cabs, a two hour drive into the jungle. Long story short, mercifully we were not kidnapped by rebels. We found ourselves in a jungle clearing at what appeared to be an ancient colonial plantation style mansion. It was like out of a movie. Twenty-ish beautiful women lined up outside. The madam asked us to choose one each. That was the most glorious night of my life, and could have easily been my last. I don't recall where I read it but they still have prostitution in Muslim nations. They just issue temporary marriage license or some crap like that so when you were shagging the chicks you are technically married. Spent one, one stroke two years in a friend zone with this girl. We went out, we went to malls, we went to movies, we went everywhere. I finally could not take it anymore and one night told her that I had feelings for her since day one. She said that she had feeling too for me since day one also, and she thought that she was in my friend zone. We said we both spent the last one, one stroke two years wanting each other, but thought we were both friend zoning each other. Ended up having sex that night and pretty much over the next few weeks. We broke it off a few months later and decided that we were better off as friends. Go figure. Go Learned French. Literally. I spent two goddamn years learning French in the hopes of impressing this one French girl that I knew. I took classes, went to France, did all this bulls, and it didn't even work. But at least now I know French. Not me. Since I was dating someone, but my two friends met some drop dead gorgeous southern bells in New Orleans, and they suggested we head to Tuscaloosa the following weekend to see the Barma vs. LSU game and hang out with them. Women? Beer? SEC football? We'd be stupid not to go. My buddies and I hop in the car and we proceed to almost die on a Louisiana turnpike. A car in the right lane was going. 45 mph right as we were headed over a hill right at them. I swerved so hard my car fishtailed and skidded sideways. I'll never know how we didn't flip. We flew into a thankfully empty ditch with no injuries and a non-damaged car. My buddy joked he had a fear boner. Nervous laughter ensued. We finally get to Tuscaloosa and the place is freaking packed. We can't get a hold of the girls at all so we bum around on the quad which is packed with food and beer. We eat like kings but my friends are miffed that they haven't hear from the girls. Eventually, my friend hears that the girls are in the stands and that they'll meet us afterwards. Well, Bama ends up losing pretty badly, so the girls tell us that they're just going home. What the frick? You had three guys travel all this way so you could flake because your team lost? My buddies were pee. We end up trying to find bars to go to since we needed to salvage the night. One of my friends ends up screwing a girl behind a dumpster. My other friend disappears. And I lose everyone and just stumble back to my car where I sleep. We all reconnected in the morning and decided that as crappy a thing the Balmer girls did. At least we got a story out of it. The only part of this story that I don't believe is that Barma lost. Joined the Filipino American student organization and became an officer. Two years of commitment. I'm extremely white. Currently married to lady I was pursuing so I jaff. Talking to my almost girlfriend. This happened a few months ago, but the relationship started way before that. We were basically friends that liked each other's company. Out of the loneliness of the groups that we were used to hang out with. We'd spend time with each other, 
talked about our views on the world, that kind of stuff. So much so that we started getting close. Too close. We had established that we both like each other but wanted to take it slow and see where things were led to. Somewhere in the middle of all that, however, her ex best friend started butting in, and because they had a strong history with each other, she decided that she'd much rather have a relationship with him than me. This meant a 4 month relationship just blew up within a day. She left me for him. I severed all communication. Uh, actually, she severed all communication. She treated me like I meant nothing. A year passes and we had just both graduated and jobs that required us to move in different cities. Far enough to be called different cities, but close enough for us to still travel to one another. Not a week goes by and then I chat her up, get her number, and catch up. After a while I ask if she'd like to see the place I'm staying in. She says she'll be available on the weekend, which was bad timing for me since I had booked a bus ticket back to our hometown, so that's money I ain't getting back. Next problem, we were on different time schedules. She had just gotten off her 9 to 5 while I was just starting my night shift. I convince her that I'll be able to pick her up at a close by mall when she gets close enough. She tells me to book an Uber to my office, and of course, I had to pay. As she arrives to the mall, I spend my lunch hour getting to her to pick her up and let her settle in a cafe right next to my office. I then realize that I had to buy condoms. Had to run a block to buy a box and back while everyone thought I was using the restroom. Last problem, I have a roommate, and we both have the same end hour, meaning that we'd both be heading back home to rest. I desperately talked to my roommate to give me an hour, just an hour, which meant that he had to stay down at the convenience store the whole time. Luckily he agrees, and that's how I spent the end of my first week of work, angry freaking a somewhat x. TL. DR. Girl plus me plus desperation equals some fuck. Late to the party. It was in high school and I was as frisky as anyone at that time. The girl that I was hanging with and messing around with said she was worried about taking someone's virginity. I tried my best to convince her that it wasn't an issue but she wasn't having it. She finally said, if only you weren't a virgin, I'd frick you right now. So after that I went out, found another girl that was cool with doing it just for fun and had sex with her. Finally went back to the first girl and she was excited so we fricked then and there. Took me a good few months to realize that I had sex with someone in order to have sex with another someone. High school can be a wild ride. I live in GA, but went to college in FL for undergrad. I did the whole long distance relationship thing for a little bit with my GF at the time who lived in the same area of my GA home, where I lived with my dad plus fam. At one point in that time span, one of my friends from school that lived in GA told me they were traveling back home for the weekend and that I was welcome to ride. So I decided I'd take this opportunity to go home, see the fam and surprise my GF. When I got to back to GA and wanted to see my GF the night I got there, I knew my dad wouldn't let me drive one of his precious automobiles so I had to devise a plan to get my GF over my house so we could see each other. I came up with a story about my family being out of town and my stepmom noticing her wedding ring had fallen off and she thinks it had fallen somewhere on our driveway. Crappy story I know, but it was the best I had. So I called my GF up in hopes that she'd buy the story and pull up to my house where I would be awaiting her arrival outside. To no surprise, it didn't work. It was late at night and she knew her mom wouldn't let her get the car this late. Said she'd check the next day. So it was all on me. I saw my little brother's bike that he had gotten when he was 5, maybe 6 sitting in the garage and I just knew I struck gold. Although the bike would be small, it was a small price to pay for some butt. I pull the bike out of the garage and as soon as I hop on I realize the bike has flat tires and I almost let my booty dreams deflate. But I was determined. I didn't come all the way back home to not see my baby. So here I am, 6 feet 1 inches on a bike made for a tot. Pedaling on two flat tires. I couldn't bike more than a minute at a time without my quads feeling like I had done a dozen squat reps at 475. So I'd bike, walk, bike, walk, repeat. For 2.5 miles. 2.5 miles fam. I can't remember exactly how long it took me, but it was upwards of 45 minutes. So I finally get outside her house. 
call her and say something to the effect of go outside and take a look at the moon, it's beautiful tonight, she comes outside and there I am waiting, it was worth it in the end, even though I had to pedal back another 2.5 miles, around 5am, but it was mostly downhills, tl, dr, pedaled 5.0 miles round trip on a peewee bike with two flats for the butt. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.